My daily life is such a struggle now because of how my size have gotten. It's hard for me to do things because of my weight. So I rely on my family and friends to help me do what I have to do. Even with all the weight I have on me now, I'm still able to get around and do some basic things myself, like cleaning myself on my own still. So I push myself to do that. But it's hard. It's very hard. When you're my size, you have so many areas you have to keep clean. I get out of breath, and it's very painful. So I can barely handle finishing. So I'm never fully clean because I can't do it all at once. I really have to take a shower like twice a day in order to get very clean. And it's hard not to smell, but I want my family to try to help me with it, you know. Right now, I'm staying in an apartment with my son and my niece and my daughter-in-law. I had to move in with them because I wasn't able to take care of myself anymore. Usually, it's my niece Mimi or my caretaker, Cameo, that has to help me most. I try to limit it to getting me what I need. But you know the reality is, can't do it on my own sometimes. And once I get dressed, I still have to rest a bit. Because of how tired that makes me, I'm exhausted already. And I know it's that way because of how I eat. You know, eating is what I do most of the day. It's the only thing to bring me the pleasure that I want. It's what I look forward to constantly. Either Trina or my niece will give me my first meal of the day. They know what I like and they just bring it to me. Come in. Hey, I'm here to bring the chicken. Uh, yes, because I'm hungry. Aww. Trina and my niece, Mimi, both give me a hard time when they bring me what I want. So you mean to tell me you finna eat all this chicken? You wanted all this? I ring, really? Mm-hmm. But what I'm eating, I just want to be left alone to eat. I don't want to hear all that, but they at least still bring me what I want so I can overlook that. Plus, when I'm eating, it helps me forget everything else and block out a lot, you know, because when I have any of my favorite foods, all the hurt of me is taken away until the food is gone. You ain't even offer me a piece of chicken. Do you want a piece of chicken? No, I, I, I don't want no chicken. I mean baked chicken. I'm trying to eat healthy for the kids, you know? You got your children. I don't have my children. Irene. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of praying. Don't never say you get tired of praying. You I better... didn't mean to say that. Yeah. But because I pray every day. Pray without ceasing. That my kids come home. But anyway, I know I have to go to work. OK, thank you, friend. And I love your name. I love Nothing you. you can do about it, OK? OK. OK? Love, love you, you, baby. baby. Okay. Mm. Okay. See you later. Okay. Oh, I'm glad she gone. Whenever I have something to eat, I will not stop until I eat it all. When I'm done eating, then like an hour later, I ask somebody to come give me some more food. Because I never want the feelings, that food gives me to stop. So I just sit and eat for the rest of the day. Because food is how I survive, you know? It's killing me in a lot of ways now, but for most of my life, it was what got me by. And if I didn't have that, I don't know what I would have done. I know my food addiction had led me to this point. But for many moments in my past, it was the only source of happiness that I had I was always the big girl, even when I was really young, because I always have a love for food. That started very early on, because I know I use food to feel better, right from the start, because my parents separated when I was five years old, because my dad started abusing my mom, and she left him. And I think that's when I became depressed, you know? And that's when I remember the start of my eating. But where it started was at church, because my mom was a church woman, so she went to church every day of the week. And, you know, there was always food at the church functions and plates of food and pastries. And I just eat as much as I could. 
I used to just eat myself basically into a coma until I threw up and stuff like that. And food became my source of comfort, so I was always trying to get it. My self-esteem was real low because of how big I was, and I still think I just ate and ate because I was depressed. My parents and my siblings talked to me about my weight all the time, but they enabled me because they always gave me food, you know. Both my mom and my sister did, because with my mom, she took care of us. But she had to work hard to provide that life to me and my sister back then. My mom is from an island near South Africa called Mauritius. And because she always had to work, you know, she gave me fast food to feed me and my sister. So I just put on weight as I got old. And by the time I was 10 or 11 years old, I was 140 pounds. I kept eating as much as I wanted, so I kept gaining. And when I started high school, I got into over 250 pounds at 14. So being that big made high school hard. I got teased and bullied a lot. And I didn't have a lot of friends, but I had boyfriends. When I was 16, I started dating someone, and he was abusive physically, verbally, and emotionally. My self-esteem was already low. So I thought I was lucky to have his interest. Even though my boyfriend was abusive, I stayed with him. And I got pregnant when I was 16 and had my son when I was 17. That's when I had Ja'Cory. But after I got pregnant and my boyfriend broke up with me. I was a single mother at 17. And with the pregnancy, I put on another 100 pounds and I was up over 350. But with the stress of having a child then, I just kept eating to deal with that, you know, because I was terrified. I had to try out of school, and I didn't know what I was gonna do. But thankfully, my mom helped me out some. I had help for a couple of years. But when I turned 19, I had a lot of tragedies change my life. In a span of a little over two years, I lost my dad, then my mom, my oldest sister, and my aunt and it was really devastating for me. It caused me to eat a whole lot. But once my parents was gone, I was homeless and I had nowhere to go. Me and my son slept at a metro bus stop until we met this woman and she took me to the shelter for children and women. And that allowed me to get back on my feet for a bit. I was 21 then, but I didn't know how to raise a child and provide for myself, but the people there, they showed me how to take care of my son. Cameo was one of them, so that's how we met and became friends. And she always looked after me from that point on, but with the guidance from all of them, I became independent. And then while being at the shelter, I wound up dating someone and I wound up pregnant with my oldest daughter. And they had a rule against being pregnant while I was there, so they kicked me out because I got pregnant while I was there. And I tried to do what I could to make a living. when I was 24 and around 500 pounds. So that made it hard for me to work consistently. So for the next six or seven years, I either stayed with a friend or who I was dating. And I had three more children. My weight increased during that time. And I got to around 600 when I was in my early 30s. I was struggling and I started to turn to alcohol. And then it escalated from there. When I was 34, I met some people that was not good influences on my life. I turned to drugs because I was depressed and I was hanging around the wrong people. That time was my lowest point because all my addictions led me to lose my kids. At that point, Ja'Cory was 18 and I had gone out on his own and I had my four other kids. And someone had reported me because of my addictions. And so CPS came and took my three youngest, and I was devastated. And I, I actually lost my mind, you know. But it led me to a wake-up call. You know, I got clean and sober for my kids then. But when I got rid of those addictions, it led me right back to food. Sobriety has made my weight increase. And I think at this point now, I'm back up to 600 pounds again. I had to move in with my oldest son, Ja'Cory. And I feel bad because I really want him to live his life. But because I'm his mother, I think he feel like he's obligated because I took care of him in the past. 
Every day is up here a battle because my mom can't control her eating. I feel like you should always be there for your mom. So I'm trying my best to take care of her. But trying to get my mom to eat the right stuff for her is really a battle for me because she don't really kind of care for too many items that I bring. As a son, I love my mom. I don't want her to pass away. I want her to live a happy, healthy life. So I really do hope my moms get better. But I can't take care of myself yet until I get rid of my food addictions. You know, I got rid of my other addiction. And now this is the last one that stands in my way to get my life back and to get my kids back. Hey, girl, hey. How about the food? Oh, thank you, girl. Thankfully, my three youngest are with family, but I want to get them back. And that's not going to happen unless I get all the weight off me. But I have to break my food addiction to do that, and I don't know how to. That's how I get by, and that's all I do with my day. I sit on the couch and wait for my food, and then I eat till I want to pass out. And then shortly after that, I just do that again and again until it's time for me to go to bed. The next day, I do it all over again. Eating is my life. My favorite, too. Oh, girl, look at that. I know what you like. My mouth is watering. Oh, my God. <laughs> when my aunt calls me and tells me to bring her food, it's kind of conflicting because I want to tell her no but then I know she's gonna get angry, so I just get it for her anyway. I do it because I love my auntie, but my aunt has to do better. And if my aunt keeps on eating like she does, death is the only outcome. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Annie, is you gonna eat all that? Girl, but here you go. When I'm eating, I feel Good, I feel happy. And it's the only time I feel like that. I want to be happy, so I never want to stop eating. Even when I'm full, I push myself to finish off the food that I have. To make sure it's all gone so no one will get it. So once I have what I want, I'm going to eat it all no matter what. And I've never been able to change it, you know? That's good. 